Hey my dear data friends, it's Nicola from Data Motor and welcome to a third week of our data modeling, fundamentals of data modeling series of videos. I hope you learned some basics about OLTP and OLAP systems in previous two weeks. Today I'm going to talk about the first phase of data modeling and how to implement it in real life. And this phase is called conceptual data modeling. Stay tuned. When teaching business intelligence concepts and techniques, I find one of the concepts particularly intimidating for many business analysts, especially those who are just starting their journey. And that is the concept of data modeling. Why is data modeling sometimes intimidating? Maybe because you see all these diagrams that look so complex and complicated. But data modeling is not about diagrams. It's about creating trust, a shared understanding between the business and data professionals with the final goal to provide increased business value with data. If we agree that data modeling is about creating trust, I believe we can also agree that trust can't be easily built. A certain amount of time and effort should be taken into consideration. And time and effort are not something that you take for granted. It's something that you need to invest. So we can rightly assume that data modeling is a kind of investment. An investment that should bring more stability and adaptability to your business. Think of it like investing in building a house. Obviously, you can choose to go the quick and easy way by simply putting building blocks directly on the ground. And it can possibly work just fine for some time, until some new circumstances occur. Think about an earthquake or thunderstorm, for example. And your house will probably be damaged. But it's not only the house that's going to be damaged. Your trust will also be damaged. People who live with you, your neighbors, friends, will realize that you didn't invest the proper amount of time and effort in advance to prevent such a bad scenario. Now, let's assume that you decided to take another path, more demanding at the very beginning, which will require more time and effort from your side. You established a proper foundation for the house, secured things under the ground, and then built a house on top of it. Now, your house will be more stable and can adapt to future challenges. Since we explain why it is of paramount importance to invest time and effort in building a data model. Let's now examine various types of data models and how they fit into the big data modeling picture. Usually, the starting point is creating a conceptual data model. This is a high level, let's say 10,000 feet high perspective on the business needs for data. As we are talking about a high level perspective, the main goal of the conceptual data model is to simplify business processes and entities important in day-to-day -day business workflow. In this stage, we are compiling a big picture. What are the key entities in our business workflow? How do they correlate with each other? The key characteristic of the conceptual data model is that it should communicate in easy to understand terms. Simply said, leverage a common language that business users and non-technical individuals can easily understand. I know I told you that data modeling is not about diagrams, but still we need to visualize the process of creating a data model. I'll first give you a basic example of the conceptual data model. In this illustration, you can identify various entities, stadium, event, customer, attendee and ticket. You may also notice how these entities are interconnected. This high-level overview provides a simplified picture of the business workflow within the organization. Now, let's move on and explain in common language what we see in this illustration. Our first entity is Stadium. Stadium has a name and is located in a specific country and city, which uniquely identifies that stadium. Stadium may host many events and there can be many attendees coming to these events. Next, we have an event. A specific event cannot exist outside of the stadium where it is scheduled to be held. An event can be attended by an attendee and there can be many attendees for one event. Attendee is the entity that attends the event. 
they can also be a customer of the stadium entity in case they visit a stadium shop for example or similar. The key difference between the customer and attendee is that the customer doesn't necessarily need to attend a specific event at the stadium. Customer may have a relation to stadium, like I said, for example by visiting a stadium museum or buying at a stadium fan shop, but that doesn't make them attendees of the event. Finally, a ticket is an entity that represents confirmation that the attendee will attend a specific event. Each ticket has a unique identifier, as it would be really awkward if two or more attendees get the ticket with the same number. Although the ticket is uniquely identified, one attendee can purchase multiple tickets. Now that we've explained the core components of conceptual data modeling, you might be wondering why is this important? Why should someone spend time and effort describing all the entities and relations between them? Remember when we were talking about building trust between business and data personas? That's what the conceptual data model is all about. Ensuring that business stakeholders will get what they need, explained in a common language so that they can easily understand the entire workflow. Setting up a conceptual data model also provides business stakeholders with the possibility to identify a whole range of business questions that need to be answered before building a physical data model. Some of the questions business may ask are, are the customer and attendee the same entity and why they are not? Can one attendee buy multiple tickets? What uniquely identifies a specific event? And many more, of course. Additionally, the conceptual data model depicts sometimes very complex business processes in an easier to consume way. Instead of going through pages and pages of written documentation, one can take a look at the illustration of entities and relationships, all explained in a user-friendly way and quickly understand the core elements of the business process. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. If that was the case, please make sure to click this like button down below. Also, if you want to follow up on these fundamentals of data modeling series of videos, make sure to subscribe to Data Motor channel. See you next Friday.